guest is a friend of the Atheist Network group from our regular Discord chat. His name is James Benton. He is a Christian who owns the YouTube channel Meaning Forge, which seeks to explore how people find and make meaning in their lives. So without further ado, James, come on down. Or should I call you Jim? Doesn't matter, man. Either way. <laughs> Welcome Thanks to for the having show. Me. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for being a part of this, and um, I'm I'm grateful that you agree to. You know, we've talked a couple times um, in the Tang Discord, and uh, this is kind of really the first discussion that the first formal discussion we're having on anything. Um, so I I don't know. I found it interesting that you like to hang out in there with us, and I was curious about your perspective on you know some of the conversations that we do have. But before we get into any of that. I'm sure the audience here who may be being introduced to you for the first time would like to know a little bit about you. So uh, who is James Benton? Who, who are you? What do you believe? How'd you come to believe it? <laughs> uh, yeah. So I guess who am I? Well, I'm just a random guy trying to figure out how to make uh, his way in the world, just like any other person. Right. So uh, at the end of the day, that's it's kind of the the blunt force trauma of that navigating the world is not easy. I am a makeshift poet, a historian. Uh, I'm dabbling my foot in economy, in economy uh, or economics. I uh, am a logistician and a supply chain guy uh, professionally. And uh, I'm, I guess I get to say I was a veteran uh, or I am a veteran now. So it's pretty awesome. Uh, a, veteran and then, of, a veteran of what? The good old, well, I mean, lots of things. So uh, I like that one. Uh, a veteran of of the Army, from the Army, and a veteran of just trying to navigate a bunch of different uh, uh, ideas, actually, I think, um, and now, trying to come you out. Said, you said you were a veteran of the Army, the United mm -hmm. States Army, I'm guessing, right? Yes. You were American. Okay, so first of all, yeah. HUA, and thank Hua. you for your service. Thank you. Um, and so that's something that we share in common. I'm a veteran of the Air Force, so I, I, we may have some little uh, inner service rivalry. With oh, that we have to. I mean, you're just my little brother. That, that's all. It's OK. Yeah, that's right. Because, yeah, you, you guys came, you know, first. But you know what? You have to be smarter to get into the Air Force. So uh, we, we, may okay. have, we may have to, you know, see who has the bigger brain. Uh, that's to, fine. That's all. That's uh, fine. I tried the Navy and I, they didn't like me. So uh, I, I can't no swim. So I didn't even try <laughs> <laughs> so veteran of the army and uh the first thing you said was well i didn't mean to interrupt you because you you may have mm -hmm. 10 more things i'm kind of rambling too it's You're a it, poet it was, a historian a, a vet what else are you is that it i mean i'm just just a guy trying to figure out his way in the world at the end of the day that's the best way to look at it so poetry that one is very interesting uh what kind of poetry do you do? uh i dabble in my own little non rhyming form, I guess I use it more as ideas. So like I'm able to use it to push uh, abstract ideas a little bit, a little bit further or, or as far as I can reach it with it. So that way I can um, almost understand it better in some regards. Uh, so it's, existing, it's really interesting. Are these mm -hmm. existing abstract ideas or ideas that you originate? Uh, it's a mix of existing and stuff like that. So for example, um, uh, I recently wrote a, a, a poem called the age of, of discovery. Mm -hmm. Right. And so that the setting is going to, it's kind of like 1492, like you start sailing and all that fun stuff. It's kind of, it's sailing based, but you're also looking at the mind. And it's not an age of discovery as far as like it's discovering other things, it's discovering different ideas um, and how you reconcile those ideas. And then on top of that, it's um, it deals with some cases of death and a few other things. So it's, it's really, uh, it, again, it's just a method that I could sit there and write something out and try and push something as far back as I can. Cause I allude to like Aeneas, Virgil's Aeneas. I allude to, Homer's Odyssey and Achilles and so on and so forth. So there's lots of different things that are coming from that. And it sounds like the settings are a mixture between um, actual history, historical settings and, uh, and fantasy, well, or myths, I should say. 
Uh, yeah. So it, it, it pulls in myths. So like in one, I, I write, uh, it's one I'm writing, it's called the candle in the dark. And what that alludes to is, uh, Prometheus giving fire to man. Right. And what that would represent. And at the very end, I said, I, I ask, um, uh, so Prometheus was able to survive the day-to-day -day torture because he was looking up and he saw every star in the sky like a candle in the dark. Mm. Um, I, we need to we need to have future conversations about Prometheus because um, I I love Prometheus and I yeah. actually belong to another organization called Promethean Secular Frontier, which uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with. But yeah, I, I, I I've watched a few videos from. From, uh, yeah, you need, to, you need to get in there with us and, and educate us uh, uh, as the historian's uh, perspective <laughs> on, on this. I'm not that so, good. Pardon? I'm not that good. <laughs> I, I'm a layman in just about every in every aspect of it. So but you know what? That. That's that's fine because um, most people are laymen. Layman, layman is a word that refers to the majority of people, right? So exactly. most of us are laymen in some way. And um mm -hmm. But, you know, we I could be a layman in history and you could be, but that doesn't mean that we know the same things. You know, the, the reason we're laymen is because I know some stuff and, you know, other stuff. But when we put our knowledge together, then we damn near become experts. It's like, what, what is it? Distributed cognition or something like that? I don't know that terminology, but it sounds good. And you can just good. baffle me with bullshit with that, you know? Yeah. No, distributive, I, no. uh, I wouldn't, whatever, I wouldn't do that. I try to keep things uh, as, as clear as possible. Not so always successful, your, but I try. What is your YouTube channel about? You you have Meaning Forge, and yeah. it. Um, I, I looked at you know your uh, the little the bio you gave me, and basically um, helping people to find meaning. And so, yeah. um, how do you how do you do that? Is it just um, exploring other people's ideas about what their lives mean, or do you offer? Yeah. So so let me just. I, I guess the simple the simple way to put this is. The meaning forge is like, so it's how you find and make meaning. And uh, I'm using some blacksmith type of uh, imagery here. Right. Mm -hmm. And the idea here is it's an experiment one. Like it's, uh, I don't claim to know anything about it. I just claim that I'm trying to find it out. Right. I'm, I'm trying to find some underlying, uh, maybe ontology is the right word. I don't know. Uh, ideas of how we find and make meaning uh, in our life. And I do that through interviewing people, right? And and using the symbology of the Meaning Forge, which is a hammer, a sword, a pen, and a crown, where we talk about someone's life and, excuse me, and uh, we talk about their life and we hopefully try to pull some themes that they've seen and uh, how they're acting now and then what they want their legacy to be. Do you think that, uh, speaking of meaning, do you think that there is any intrinsic meaning to life? Or do you think that uh, meaning is just something that we assign to our own lives? Uh, that's, a, that's a great question that I probably should refrain from answering a little bit just because there's a lot of, like, I, I really don't know on the surface. I think there's- Well, maybe there's, this will help you if I yeah. elaborate, because the reason that I ask is- when, whenever I read something that says that they're about um, trying to find meaning, it would suggest that one, they don't have it or they haven't found it yet, right? And so that it sounds like people are on this path to figuring out what the meaning is. And so there's either a meaning that is there to find or there's a meaning that we have to create. And it's that version of finding it, creating it. So what do you think is more appropriate to what you are trying to do? Are you trying to help it's people both. find? Okay. It's both because meaning can be revealed as well. So mm -hmm. like you, you, you find it and the, the sequence of events, I don't, like, I don't want to get into what comes first. I'll just say, like, I think there's, there's two aspects to it. You can, it's revealed to you and you find it. So I say find and make and you make it. Um, if you're maybe aware of that's what you want or, or you're disciplining yourself to, to achieve. Is it, uh, would it be fair to say that part of finding the meaning includes figuring out whether there is an intrinsic meaning to find versus something that needs to be created? Would that be included in that 
uh, yeah. in that paradigm. Yeah, I mean, and that's what I'm trying to do, right? And so I'm trying to define if there is an like an underlying foundation for how we make or find meaning or or something like that. I mean, and not only that, but that changes all the time. Uh, it changes almost by generation, by indiv- like, even down to the individual, it, it changes. So yeah. And that's that, that I think is one of those beautiful parts about it. Like everyone has different meaning in their life that they can find and make. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. So before we go um, a little bit further, um, I'm going to uh, override Sonny on this point and switch to this view just because when it's side by side, <laughs> I like yeah, that I one. It. Sorry, that's my OCD kicking in. Um, but mm-hmm. I do want to give shout outs to kind of the people that are watching. So we've got Glenn Davis, which is, I'm not sure if that's a new name or not, but I don't recognize it. So thanks for watching Glenn. And if if you're, if you've been here all the while, get a little bit more vocal so I can get familiar with you. But if you're new to the show, then welcome. Uh, we've got Asexual Atheist, what's going on? John Christian, that's another name I'm not, I don't think I'm familiar with, but uh, welcome. Kathy Humanist, uh, who else? We got Sunny Shell, who's, Back there, of course, James Smith. Uh, yeah. And of course, we got the night pot dishing out all this lovely information. There's Murder Shed Steve back there. And um, let's see. Oh, heard that James Benton is a half Christian like Oz. <laughs> um, we're going to talk about that uh, coming up. Sort coming up. Well, soon. Well, well, also, Murder Shed Steve. So, so if I'm a half Christian like Oz, right? You know, whatever. That's my bedtime alarm, which that's not going to happen tonight. So uh, <laughs> I'm I, also I'm so sorry like a half murderer that. like Murder Shed Steve because I have my axe behind me and a hammer. So, I mean, there you go. So, yeah, more more common ground all over the place. So I appreciate appreciate all of you uh, interacting in the chat. And by the way, if anybody has questions tonight for James or myself, please feel free to leave them as obvi- as normal. Uh, super chats are appreciated and uh, they will be prioritized. Okay. So back to you, James. Um, speaking of that, because Steve did bring up something you, if I'm not mistaken, you, first of all, you are a theist, correct? Yes. Uh, okay. I, I guess if you want to get precise, I'm a monotheistic uh, believer in the Christian, we'll say the Christian God. Okay, that was in, uh, it's an interesting way that you put that, but um, as, as, as precise as I could. <laughs> sure, sure. Um, now, what? Um, well, I guess I should start with how did you come to believe what you currently do? And oh, I'm trying to question. change the way I'm trying to change the way I ask that question because the 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 simple way to ask that is why do you believe what you do? But sometimes that comes off as a little, you know. Uh, yeah, it's okay or whatever. So, yeah, how, how did you come to the, How did you come to the position that you are currently at? Okay, so, uh, you know, talking about narratives of life, right? So, I did grow up in in a Christian church and a few other things, right? Uh, I actually had a good dose of the big three, right? Catholicism, Protestantism, and uh, I call it big three baptism because ba- like Baptists are crazy. I mean, they're just fundamentally a whole nother brand in itself. Well, I'm glad you I'm glad you clarified what you meant by big three because I know the big three as Christianity, Islam, and Judaism. So I would have been uh, well within Christianity, it's it, I would say it's Protestant, or, Protestant Orthodoxy, and and Catholicism. I would agree with that, but that's not yeah. what you just said. You yeah, said, I said within okay, that's, okay. So Baptist, so within Christianity, uh, yeah. So <laughs> okay. within Christianity, I got a big dose of the big of of Three, pretty much their their own. Okay. Uh, just don't count orthodoxy because that's just not really big in America. Uh, <laughs> so um, I uh, I can get into all the baptized things, all the confirmation things. Like that that's that's either here nor there. Uh, college, I was pretty uh, skeptical and. Had a, had a crisis of faith, which I've, I've talked about in a normalizing in normalizing atheism's uh, interview with me back uh, a few months ago. Uh, so go check that out. And I uh, I had a crisis of faith. I became very skeptical, and and the 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 beautiful part about it is it it created a dialectic process in which I could kind of start to 
to test these ideas and um, be skeptical and kind of, again, find my way through the world and hopefully live a good life, um, whatever that means. So as far as like what led me to believe directly, there's uh, we can call them personal experiences. Uh, I've done my own studies and where I've, I've kind of arrived at a deistic position at the, at the surface. And then from there I have kind of said, okay, Christianity, I think makes the most sense. 